In today's video, I am interviewing Dr. Adam Fix, and Dr. Fix has a PhD in the history of science, technology, and medicine. And so he sits in a very, very interesting spot between the humanities and the sciences. And he has turned that into a career at 3M as a writer. And we are going to talk about a slightly different side of science writing today. So if you followed along with my science slash medical writing videos, you know that I am a medical writer. This is going to be slightly different though. It's science writing, but it's not in the life sciences. So for those of you that have had questions around, can I be a scientific writer? who doesn't write about medical sciences the answer is a big yes Adam is doing that and you're going to find this video super valuable speaking of medical writing I do have a class coming up on July 9th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time 7 a.m. Pacific Time it is a 90 minute class on medical writing in that class I go over really important facets of this career called medical writing how you can bring into it if you're brand new some behind the scenes content that I haven't shared on this channel if you're interested in learning more through that class maybe you need some extra help you would like to get your questions answered in a very intimate group setting then go ahead and register for that class the link is going to be in the description all right so now let's jump right into the interview hello Adam and welcome to the Bull PhD series the first question I love to ask uh, everybody that comes on the show is what is your educational background so could you tell us a little bit about that so um <clears throat> in reverse order uh, my phd is in history of science technology and medicine and i did that at the university of minnesota and before that i was a, a mathematics and history double major as an undergrad so in the common theme throughout all of this is that i've always liked um, sort of being in between the humanities and the STEM fields. So history of science is my way of balancing those two things. And nowadays I consider myself a science writer, science communicator type person. So that's the extension of that in my current work. Absolutely. So right now you are a science communicator, which means a lot of things, right? I just did a talk yesterday on science communications and there's so many roles, so many paths to science communication. So what exactly do you do? Well, in my current job, I am um, a global writer at the 3M Transportation and Electronics Group. So for those um, who don't know 3M, they're the post-it note people. Uh, but that's not the division I work in. So I work in the, I work with advanced electronic and, you know, engine components and things that would go into automobiles and planes and aircraft, things like that. So a lot more science-y than post-it notes, I guess is what I'm saying there. And my main, the main thing that I do, the main deliverable I produce in that job is the written copy on website pages. So the words that appear on a 3m.com page, as well as some other things like press releases or case studies or brochures, you know, stuff with words on them. I do that. Okay, so you can see this, right? Okay, so here's a recent page that I worked on, I think last winter. Uh, these are for 3m friction shims, which are basically just uh, steel discs, like little washers that can be put into an engine. And the idea is that they increase uh, friction between joints, which uh, increases the strength of the joint and reduces failure rates and things like that. So you can see here, just to make it simple, my job is to write the words that appear on these pages. So things like this, and this description here, and the catchy headlines, and the, uh, the statistics. And also occasionally we have some uh, test data to present on the pages. So I will write a description of an experimental result like here, you know, describing in words how the 3M product benefits uh, the consumer applications, in this case, automotive chassis. You know, they increase the strength of uh, chassis components and axle components. It is vividly displayed here, I think. Another example, this is a press release I did 
last summer, uh, last fall, sorry. These are for uh, cooling fillers, which are a uh, 3M product that possesses, you know, this right, very high thermal conductivity, but very low electrical conductivity, which is a, a tricky balance to maintain. And that's kind of the selling point of the boron nitride cooling filler. So I just wrote about the new line that was produced recently and the special benefits that this new line of products offers, namely increased uh, dielectric properties, better thermal conductivity, things like that. So just so you can see what I do, I think that's better than telling about it, generally speaking. Thank you for sharing that. So you're writing web pages, you're writing press releases, you're writing, like you said, written, any written document that needs to be written for the specific department you work in. And especially, it was kind of cool because yesterday during um, the talk, I was doing one of the questions that somebody had asked because I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a, a microbiologist and immunologist by training. So I work in the natural sciences as a science communicator. And somebody had asked, are there rules for people that are not in the natural sciences and are in, you know, what kind of what you're doing right now? So absolutely, for the, anybody that has that question around how can I be a science communicator in physics or in something else, this is an example of that. Thank you so much for sharing that, Adam. Um, so you know, uh, what skills would you say allowed you, or maybe let's let's backtrack a little bit. So you moved from your PhD to going into this role. How were you able to do that? One of the biggest fo uh, foci of this show is really to give people, give people's stories on how they left academic you know, academia and then all the academic environment and then went into industry, you went to 3M. So what was that like and what skills would you say were helpful as you were, you know, making that move? So first of all, um, it's not really true that I went straight from my PhD into 3M. You know, a lot of people tell their transition stories that way, but it's always skipping over a lot of really hard steps in between. So uh, in my case, well, I had left the university in June of 2020. So, you know, right when the world turned upside down, don't need to go into that. So no one was hiring, obviously. So what I did was a ton of freelance and part-time based writing work, starting on uh, Upwork and other freelancing sites that you might be familiar with, which uh, the pay was terrible, obviously. And it was a lot of work. Not a lot of reward, obviously, but uh, slowly and steadily, I was able to build up a whole lot of uh, non-ACK writing and research skills that I really didn't have before. So a big one was SEO, that's search engine optimization, which is something that academics never worry about, but in all kinds of non-ACK writing, it's really important that the stuff you write shows up in Google, and that's what SEO is about. So through working a part-time job that just so happened to need some SEO stuff done, I taught myself things like SEM Rush, which is a tool for analyzing keyword trends. I was able to, you know, learn to uh, study website traffic and uh, popular keywords, competitive keywords, things like that. Learn the uh, art of writing content in such a way that it shows up in a search engine, uh, which was a huge part of my income for that year in between university and 3M. And it was a huge part of why I, I think, I think I got the uh, 3M job is because they, they really liked the fact that I was an academically trained writer who also knew something about SEO, which uh, apparently that's a rare combination. I didn't realize that at the time, but it is. So, um, it was a long, brutal process of acquiring some non ax skills, but I really, I can't overstate how important that was. Like there's no way I could have just walled straight from university to 3M the way, okay. So yeah, there, there was a lot of steps in between. More generally than SEO, just learning how to write non-academic stuff. It's an entirely different tone of voice, entirely different uh, standards of evidence, maybe that's the word. You know, like an academic paper is rigorously cited with 10 footnotes per page or whatever the hell it is. But non act writing does not work that way at all. So you have to learn to write more emotional, more sort of compelling, emotionally resonant 
content without necessarily rigorously citing everything. Another huge thing I learned during my Upwork freelancing experience. Absolutely, absolutely. So many great points you shared there. Academic writing is definitely different um, from when you're writing um, in a commercial setting. Um, and depending on the type of science communication, you may, like you were saying, you know, it may be rigorous. So I know for medical writers in the um, pharmaceutical industry, they tend to be more rigorous because they have to appease FDA and stuff like that. So if you want to do that type of writing, there's that. Then there's also, you know, the type of writing that's the marketing writing, which I also do, you know, and I love the fact that you said that you had gone back and learned these SEO skills. And uh, thank you for sharing that because sometimes people feel, oh, my PhD should be enough. At least that's what I thought for a minute. <laughs> my PhD should be enough. People should be impressed. But I really want to, you know, harp on Adam's point that you can go out there and use tools like Udemy or, um, you know, LinkedIn Learning to some, actually pick up some of these skills that are necessary necessary for you to, to move forward. So when it came to learning about SEO, what tools did you um, use? And if somebody wanted to go learn SEO, what tools would they, um, would you recommend? I have a few ideas, but what, what, what helped you? Well, I did not use any of those online courses, like, mm -hmm. Udemy or, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. so I, like, I learned it just through, like, firsthand experience. Right. Okay. There was a, there was a, I think a marketing firm I was working for part time, and they they were just learning about SEO themselves. So just by default, as the writer, I was kind of the guy who had to figure that out. And they did have a, a subscription to SEM Rush, just like a premier SEO. So just sort of playing around with that, I was able to teach myself a lot, which I personally think is a much better way to learn stuff than to take some kind of online course. That's just mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, learning through experience. That's just my recommendation. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Thank you for that. So for people that want to do something like you're doing, you have a background that's sort of an intersection between science and the humanities. You are now in a science communicator role. And then there's somebody who has a similar mix of background and you want to do what you're doing. What advice would you give them as they look to um, maybe their PhD student or postdoc, as they look to make that transition, what advice would you give them? In my particular job, it's really important that I'm able to sort of balance the technical and the creative aspects of writing. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, in, in one paragraph, I'll be, you know, sort of high-minded rhetoric about the benefits of science and how 3M can improve people's lives or 3M can help engineers that we're selling to improve people's lives. It's a very positivistic, futurist attitude about science and technology. It's a, it's a tone of voice I'm going for. So on one hand, there's sort of the creative, subjective, the humanities side of your brain, if you want, side of the science writing. And then in the very next paragraph, I might switch to talking about technical data. Like I recently wrote up a description of a study of um, EMI, electromagnetic interference, grounding and shielding. So, you know, on one hand, switching from the high-minded rhetoric down to the, here is what this specific case study showed. Here is the watt per meter Kelvin value for each uh, experimental configuration. So I guess it's kind of a, let's say it's like a left brain, right brain balance that mm -hmm. you have to be comfortable with if you want to write stuff like this. And like I've, I've always loved doing that myself. So if any other people like doing that sort of thing, I think this would be a good sort of career path. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on here to share with us, Adam. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. So if people wanted to reach out to you and talk to you about your career path or maybe get some ideas on how they can move forward, how could they um, do that? Oh, uh, I mean, LinkedIn, obviously. Um, my LinkedIn is just Adam Fix One, the number one. Mm -hmm. And email is the same. It's Adam Fix One at gmail.com. So yeah. either, one of, either one of those, totally fine. 
Absolutely. I will make sure to leave that in the video description so that if you also are somebody that has sort of the mix that Adam had, which is a very unique mix, um, because most of the time you either meet people with a humanities degree or a science degree, but you bridged both and you are doing both, um, then Adam is the person to talk to. So thank you, Adam.